Greetings, my name is Brandon Frame and I'm the Director of Social Emotional Learning at the Urban Assembly. And if you've been following my journey, I've, I've been going to different communities across the country to see high quality social emotional learning in action. My journeys have brought me to the state of New Jersey and the lovely and amazing city of East Orange. And so today, I'm looking forward to going around East Orange Public Schools and hearing from teachers, students, uh, administration around how they're prioritizing social emotional learning, how they're implementing, evaluating, and building their capacity around high quality social emotional learning. Let's go. Hi. Hey, Dr. Williams, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, doing wonderful. I'm on this journey uh, to go across the country see high quality social emotional learning in action and I heard about the powerful work that's happening in East Orange Public Schools. Um, so is that true that high quality social emotional learning is taking place? Listen, here? you're in the right place. You're in the right place. So tell me a little bit about uh, what the priorities have been around social emotional learning this, this year. So a number of things. So we definitely want to prioritize ensuring that social and emotional learning certainly is a distributive approach, right? And we want to make sure that the learning comes from learning to imparting skills to our students all over the school district. That sounds amazing and such powerful dynamic work that's taking place. Do you think that today we could go around East Orange Public Schools and, and, and see this work in action? Absolutely. Are you? The question is though, are you ready? I, I'm ready. I, I, I was born ready. I, I, I try to stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Uh, so I want to see this high quality <laughs> social emotional learning in action. So I heard you say, you know, it, it's certainly a uh, movement and not a moment, but are you ready to move? I'm ready to move. All right. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Social emotional learning looks like it's growing in East Orange Public Schools. We are taking leaps and bounds to implement social emotional learning into every classroom um, for every student, for every adult. And led under our esteemed superintendent, Abdul Salim Hassan, he believes in it. He believes in the value of this piece along with you know, the entire district for a more distributive approach because we try to make sure that the skills and the tool sets being presented to our students is appropriate to that population. This year we were fortunate enough to pilot with Urban Assembly with seven of our 23 schools in this work. Social and emotional learning here at Cicely L. Tyson Community School of Performing and Fine Arts looks like very much a family atmosphere. Students and staff uh, understand who each other are staff does take the time out to get to know students on a personal and individual level. In our curriculum, we talk about uh, their self-confidence, their self-esteem, how they interact with others, how they feel they're perceived by others, just to help them to get a better perspective of what kind of student they want to be. We've embedded the mindfulness strategies, we've embedded the 16 habits of the mind. I use the habits of the mind at home. I think before getting upset. I, I express my feelings to my family. My favorite habit of the mind is finding humor. My teacher taught me this song and it goes like this. Stop, do up, do up, do up. Think, do up, do up, do up. Take your time. Social emotional learning in my classroom looks uh, different dependent on the class time and period, I would say. We do things that are embedded within the curriculum. And that way, whatever else is going on in their outside class space, they're able to bring it, kind of clear their minds and bring it into the classroom in a productive way. So social emotional learning in my role, I, I'm one of the team of school counselors. And what we do is go into classrooms. We lead lessons utilizing various platforms so that the students get information on cooperation, problem solving, teamwork, how to deal with their feelings, how to deal with emotions, and being able to focus on challenges that may arise. We've had um, positive discipline where we've had um, community circles and practiced affirmations. It's our responsibility as individuals in this community to make sure that not just ourselves, but each and every participant recognize themselves as valued and important. We also believe in empowering and building capacity in parents. As parents, we not just are only present, you know, we have to be involved and engaged. 
in our children's learning every day. In the classroom, social-emotional learning looks like fewer behavioral problems, greater academic success, uh, less teacher stress, and an overall positive environment. Social-emotional learning in my classroom starts from the second the kids walk through the door to the time they leave. When the kids come in, they're welcome to have the mirror, the affirmation mirror, which they get to speak into every day to talk something about themselves. Sometimes the children come in, they're not smiling. We talk about it, use strategies to change those feelings. I champion social-emotional learning because of the impact of social-emotional learning. Um, I champion social-emotional social social learning because it brings awareness and it helps with the development of the whole child. So how can you not champion social and emotional learning? During COVID with the students and we haven't had much contact with them for a good amount of time. After the pandemic, we have students coming back into the school environment and they've had very little opportunity to really practice their social skills. It allows the students to build character. It also allows them to have a sense of self. Currently, I am working on self-awareness, learning to approach people and introduce myself. I'm working on relationship skills. It would be self-management. Responsible decision-making. Reflection and self-awareness. Without responsible decision, you probably won't get far in life. I'm just really working on thinking and processing my um, result of the solution. I would say I use my social emotional skills by being aware of my own strengths and limitations in the classroom. As I enter high school, it's going to be some tough times that I'm just going to have to say no to. I feel that it's very important for high school students to understand social emotional learning because we are the future. We have to catch them right now before they turn 15 and 16. Kindergartners need to learn social emotional skills because it's a crucial part of being able to manage their feelings. In pre-K, it's the most important because maybe at home they don't have that positive interaction. Parents don't feel it might be as important. I feel like middle school students need to develop social emotional skills because once again, it's not only just for school, it's for personal life. But just having awareness of themselves and it helps to build self-confidence. We take for granted that kids know, right, these skills already and we treat seniors like many adults but we can't. The thing I love about school, playing with my friends and being kind to them. Learning new things. I love my teachers and my class. We work and play. I enjoy writing sentences using my high frequency words. I enjoy my classmates in my class. For someone to say no to social emotional skills, I think that they should rethink that. I would say, that they're very important. We need them. It is significant to learn these skills. I would ask them, what's the point of wanting your, wanting your students to do the best if you're not gonna focus on them first before anything else? How would you feel if you were that kid walking into school, going through something at home, and them teachers are um, just worrying about your intelligence, your prettiness, your beautifulness? have sympathy and empathy. So being able to have relationship skills is important. Being able to um, make responsible decisions. Because many students may not be able to know how to articulate themselves to others. Because we all come from different walks of lives and our backgrounds are very different. So to come into a building as like a school, which is so diverse, it would be very important to have these skills. Well, I believe social and emotional skills are important because they'll help you really interact and engage in conversations with other people. When you don't think about how, one, how someone can react emotionally and socially, um, it definitely lacks in our human reactions. You can use your social emotional skills to de-escalate the conflict and to make sure you keep yourself composed so you don't get involved. I am incredible, my teachers say I'm incredible, and my social workers say I'm incredible. You guys say I'm incredible, so I think I'm incredible. And imagine if you were that kid. The correlation between social emotional learning and academic performance is there's a direct correlation, they go hand in hand. Everything just always isn't math, science, we, we get all of that. People don't realize that without those intentional developments of social emotional skill, kids can't learn. When a student is in a good space, the academic part is gonna be easy. Social emotional skill sets are developed. They're not, you're not born with it, they're not innate. So SEL Day 2022 wasn't just a day and a moment for our school district, right? It is a culmination of 
everything that we've done for the year. I mean, honestly, we've seen three, four, and five-year-olds be able to really uh, celebrate and articulate what they've learned in the classroom. This was very meaningful and special, and I think that it brought the entire community out, and it also allowed everyone to see the importance, right, of this work. This year alone, we have partnered with a social emotional platform, Urban Assembly. Uh, we took six pilot schools and we challenged them. We challenged them to take a deeper dive into social emotional learning. Working with Urban Assembly has definitely been a pleasant experience. The Urban Assembly has allowed us to focus as a team and collaboratively work with the school, with teachers, administration. Urban Assembly, it really opened our eyes as a district. I like the ongoing communication, the support that is received. Urban Assembly has this wide net, and amazing representation of inexperience of folks that have been on the ground and have done this work in schools. Having the matrix, it really gives us an opportunity to see the gaps. Sometimes we're doing things so much that we don't realize how much we're doing. So this partnership again has allowed us to certainly um, want to continue it into the following year to be able to continue to see our district soar and reach new heights. So we're really looking forward to next year incorporating the assessment piece of it. They come in and they share their vision, but they ask you to implement your vision. Being able to go back and look at the data, look at the gaps and say, okay, now I understand why we have these issues. They give us the ideas, but then they're like, okay, take flight, do what you do. Let us see what you do. Antoine. Manny. It would be Cameron. Shamaya Nasir. And Jaden. Abdul. My student, Jada. This year, and Tanil. Calcifer. I would like to thank my teacher, Ms. Peterson. Mr. Brown. Thank Mr. Boulevard. For the vice principal of this school. Ms. Wiley Grant has helped me a lot. Um, Ms. Evans. Ms. Evans as well. Probably my teacher, Ms. Cutching. My teacher, Ms. Davis, love her so much. And my counselor, my social worker, Mr. Green. Mr. Green and Ms. Letman. In the beginning of the school year, he wasn't really able to express himself verbally. This year, he is my biggest emotional. So the student came in with no language skills, and by the end of the school year, they were speaking in full sentences and writing in full sentences. I see that she's finally getting a concept of understanding and expressing her feelings. He just didn't know how to um, communicate and express himself. We check in, do uh, mindfulness breathing, like during the lunch breaks and things like that to make sure she just stays on track. I learned to look at things from a different perspective through her, through her class. Supports me and uplifts me when I really need it. She's helped me to understand how to express my emotions. She really encouraged me, especially the beginning of this school year. He has helped me in numerous ways, especially with um, responsible decision making. I was able to understand myself, understand how my actions can impact someone else's. Just being here, just doing what I do every single day and loving it. Thank you. 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 We thank you. 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 Dr. Williams, thank you so much for the opportunity to come to East Orange and see high quality social emotional learning in action. It was a pleasure to meet with students, teachers, administration. You are prioritizing social emotional learning and academic development. It was just a pleasure to, to see the work in action. Thank you so much, Brandon, and the Urban Assembly. On behalf of our superintendent, uh, Mr. Abdul Salim Hassan, we thank you and the Urban Assembly, and we look forward to the partnership for years to come. SEL is not a moment, but a movement, so that is absolutely, absolutely what I look forward to seeing, continued SEL excellence in action. Absolutely. Ah! <laughs>